The Dalits are a group of people who are at the bottom of India's social hierarchy. They fall outside of what is called the caste system uh, and are therefore outcasts. They've also know, been known as the untouchables, uh, but they have now come together and have called themselves the Dalits, which goes back to the Sanskrit word, which means crushed and downtrodden or the broken people. When we went out and visited in India, we were particularly conscious of the fact that the, the drum is a key aspect for the Dalit community, and they play it with incredible um, aggression, and they dance and they dress up and it, it is moving but full of the, uh, you sense the pain and the suffering uh, of years of being abused and victimized. I mean, I've, I've traveled a huge amount work-wise, but you know, it's mostly been in America and in Europe. And so suddenly taking off to, to India, at my advanced age, was a bit of a shock. It's the kind of thing you do, you know, with a backpack when you're 20. But, um, I mean, I was fascinated by the project. Mm. I'm sure like a lot of people, I mean, I really didn't have much of a clue as to who the Dalits actually were. I mean, if you said to me the word untouchables, I would have had a vague idea. Mm. If you talked to me about the Indian caste system, I vaguely knew it was there. But not until we started to do a little bit of homework for the project, and then of course actually got there, did I have any idea of the scale of the problem. And I suppose my notion of Indian music was a very limited picture. and. Mm. Generally, I think you know most Indian music is very sort of classical and stylized and very graceful. Is how I would have thought of it. Whereas the music we heard from the from the Dalits, which is 95% drumming, is hugely aggressive, really powerful and energetic, and terribly exciting. Now, we took various recordings of their drumming, and actually we've used those recordings. You know, they're interwoven through through most nearly all of the songs. We've used a variety of singers. Um, we've got Cliff Richard to do a vocal on one. There's a beautiful song that Paul's written called Indian Sun. Looking to find her a place. Is that where it comes in? Yeah. Okay. If we do one more of the whole thing, okay. as I say, we'll only stop and drop in if anything goes horribly awry. I'm sure it won't. It's lovely. It's really nice endings. Looking to find her a place. first things you notice is all the kids, mm. you know, I mean the kids are kind of the first thing to greet you, running alongside the car and whatever. And there was this one particular little girl, I remember, who was, you know, barefoot as they all were. And this little girl was kind of running beside the car and this really was the trigger for the Indian Sun, which, you know, you look at these children so completely carefree, they have no idea of the history that they've been born into. And that particular song was really just inspired by the kind of innocence of this little child and, and of all the children, you know, and you compare that against the weight of what they have to face and the kind of future that, that she's going to have. Rubita. Ajahn Kathuma, who works in the London and South East Christian Aid Office, is, um, she and her family are singers, and so I've got her to do a track called Raise the Flag. There was a woman, um, it was a really overwhelming story, because she had been asked, she was a leader of what uh, of a women's sangam, like a right. women's union almost yeah. uh, within a village, and she was asked at, um, to raise the flag. It was the 50th anniversary of the independence of India, and an upper caste person came and beat her up, and she was physically, uh, she couldn't do it, but mentally scarred. I mean, we're two, two and a half years on yeah. from then, and she was still... Uh, very distressed and traumatized because of it. Uh, it was just such a shocking story of victimization. And you wrote Dark Moon about yeah, that. Yeah, because one of the things that I think she said was, you know, the fact that, you know, she coped with life most of the time, but every time the dark moon rose, which I think is, is a new moon, 
I think so, yeah. Them, yeah. Is that the kind of memories came flooding back and the nightmares came and she just remembered it all again. In the time of the darkness, you can hear her calling. And when the time of the dark comes, well done, you can great. hear her warning. No sign of the hay fever. It was painless, wasn't it? <laughs> <laughs> the song Vicious Circle is about the oppression of the landlord mm -hmm. in that situation. And it was another one of that. Yeah, uh, I think, of course, it, it, it's hard, certainly hard for us to understand. I mean, for, the, for so many of the people in India who live out in rural communities in the middle of nowhere, I mean, a little tiny piece of land, probably no bigger than your or my back garden, is, is everything, because mm -hmm. that's all their livelihood. Yeah. And so their relationship with the landlord is, is crucial mm -hmm. to them. And of course, it's one of the ways in which they're most um, taken advantage of and yeah. you know, most uh, ripped off. And the tears red, the suffering and shame, and the dark moon rises once again. He's holding on is about yeah. a struggle for land, where they got land and yeah. it got grabbed yeah. back. Yeah. And it, it it's a bit of an endless song because I'm telling the whole story yeah. of 20 years. But uh, again, it's that same yeah. struggle. And it is a thing that, you know, the, the land issue, you know, if they don't have land, but they have no life, they have no mm. livelihood, they don't have any other way to make a living. So it's kind of realizing the importance of that. He's holding on, he's holding on. In battle after battle, he's still holding on. But Christianade hopes that. Uh, through this album and using the stories of the projects that were visited, working with Dalit people, that people uh, will uh, become aware of the issue of Dalit human rights and the discrimination that they suffer, uh, and that they will be able to uh, be, uh, take action in some form or another. A house without roof and walls, a rice pot without grain. Fields are wet with our sweat, and land lost treasure is gained with our labor. Starving stomachs are left for our children. Come, let us unite. I think it's the first time uh, Dalit issue is being internationalized and the Western world is showing interest on Dalit issues. So I hope uh, our liberation is not too far. <laughs>